This is an examination of an early style AC generator. It's built much like the DC motor in that we have the field coils on the generator housing. And we have an armature with a commutator section, just like a DC motor. We also have slip rings for the output. So there are two separate windings on this armature. One set is for the commutator, that's the low voltage for the field coils, and a higher voltage output for the slip rings. And just like a DC motor, if you want to reverse the rotation and generate power out, you have to reverse the connections to the field coils. If you don't, you will not generate any power. Just like a DC motor, if you want to reverse it, you have to reverse the field connections. The real big defect on this unit is that the main power goes to that flimsy little fine stranded copper lead on the output. I sure hope we can push 20 amps with this. I put the unit back together and I have it hooked up to a small power supply and we're going to power this up as a DC motor. There is a uh, voltmeter hooked up to the output leads. 22 volts AC. And it is drawing 10 amps, about four and a half volts. DC. So here is an overview of our setup for this experiment. We're using a early style 10 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine for the power. It's directly coupled to the generator via a coupler. There is our generator. The white leads out or the AC power out. There are two heavy red leads and that goes to the field coil and that goes to an amp meter for an amp reading and the two smaller red leads goes to a voltmeter to read the voltage across the commutator section. There's our terminal block for that and AC power goes to AC voltmeter, AC amps, and frequency meter. On the field supply end, or the field um, meter side, we have a DC voltmeter. We are reading the lower scale. And DC amps that comes out of the commutator for the field. As I mentioned, there is a AC capacitor across the field connections because these units are notorious for cutting out of power and this helps maintain the DC supply in the field. For our initial run, I have 1800 watts worth of light bulbs for the load. They'll be switched on in two banks and we will read our meters, field and power out.
So what I have here is a three foot diameter fan. And we're gonna use this as a load and see what happens. I'm gonna turn on the fan again and I'll have the meters hooked up and watch the amp meter. You'll see they start winding cut out. Next we're going to turn on a half horsepower bench grinder and we're going to put a load on it and see how it handles it. The final experiment with this generator is going to be an arc load. So we have the two carbon electrodes. I'm using an arc stabilizer since this is only single phase. And we have a metered full wave bridge rectifier and also a spool of wire that is in series with the arc and that limits the current. This is like four and a half ohms. So this should keep us under 20 amps. And that's our rectifier module. This is going to be a shot of our DC voltmeter and amp meter under the arc load. Too bad most of her power is going to heat up that coil of wire, but I have to limit the current. 